new technologies to find solutions, create greater connections, and build stronger families and communities where all young people can fulfill their potential and contribute to a better world. Thank you. I thank the United States and I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Ireland. Thank you, Chair. Paul and I will be addressing the committee in our personal capacity as youth delegates, representing the voices of Irish youth. There can be no doubt that this is a trying time for the international community. Multiple armed conflicts and political unrest are threatening not only international peace and security, but are undermining the rule of law and the protection of human rights globally. Belligerent voices that threaten large-scale loss of human life cannot be accepted. Young people want peace. And we have one clear message for the international community. Be brave. Be brave not in your rallying cry to war, but be brave in your commitment to peace. We also ask that you be brave and steadfast in your commitment to the protection of human rights for all. Conflict and persecution have forcibly displaced 22.5 million refugees, over half of whom are under the age of 18. States in direct contravention to customary international law have turned refugees away at their borders, indicative of the broader international backlash and curtailment of human rights we are now facing. Historical memory appears short. We cannot turn a blind eye to the dangerous rhetoric of populism. If we allow the denial of rights for certain groups in society, then we undermine the protection of human rights for us all. Where there is division and discrimination, there can never be peace. Yes, we are going through a turbulent period, but the youth of Ireland believe that a brighter future is possible. The Sustainable Development Goals are our roadmap, UN Human Rights Treaties are our tools, and youth can be the champions of peace and sustainability, but this too requires bravery. Firstly, it requires governments to recognise the inherent potential of all youth, including young women, ethnic minorities and people living with disabilities. Secondly, it requires states to remove the barriers of inequality that hold some of us back. Within this, we ask that each state ensure that every young person receives quality, higher level education that equips them with marketable skills. We ask that each state respect and fulfil our right to health, including access to mental health services, sexual health and reproductive rights. And finally, we ask that states do their utmost to eradicate homelessness, poverty and inequality, including switching to a progressive, responsible tax model with a zero tolerance policy for tax abuse practices. We acknowledge that these changes may be difficult, but we ask you to be bold and we ask you to be brave. If you empower us, we can effect immense change. In this time of uncertainty, do not wane in your commitments to human rights. It may be difficult, but let us, the youth of the world, stand beside you. Let us speak truth to power. Let us play an equal role in the protection of rights and in building a sustainable world. Let us be brave together, because together we are stronger. Chair, two years ago, Ireland co-chaired negotiations on the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. This agenda is brave and bold, but we must now step up our implementation efforts. We are already two years into a 15-year process and simply cannot afford to lose time. As a young person, it is my generation that stands to lose the most if the SDGs are not achieved. It is therefore crucial that young people play a central figure in the implementation, monitoring and review of this agenda. To do this, the UN and national governments must engage with young people and include them into decision-making procedures. Engaging with young people does not mean ticking a box, nor does it mean seizing a photo op. It means giving young people the right to sit at decision-making tables, giving young people the right to vote, the right to fair and equal employment, an education and global citizenship, and passing on an environment that does not stifle the opportunity of today's young people or that of future generations. Collectively, we also need to encourage and empower young women and girls to enter politics and hold public office, as well as those from marginalized backgrounds. Of the 196 speakers at this year's general debate, 176 of these were men, and only 20 were women. It is difficult to aspire to become something that you cannot see. We must book the trend of these male-dominated arenas, and public bodies must better reflect the makeup of the public that they serve, and not discriminate against age, gender, sexual orientation, race, ethnicity, or religion. As Ireland currently chairs the Commission on the Status of Women, I ask I ask all member states, without exception, how do we treat women in our society? Are they equal players and equal partners? Are they afforded the same rights and autonomy as men? Do they have the same access to education, employment, healthcare, or a choice in who they'll marry? Member states need to self-reflect on this and on how we engage with young people, women and girls, people from marginalized backgrounds, and those from the LGBTQI community, and address their failings in this regard before we move forward. And we must move forward. 
The governments represented in this room today are tasked with fighting an ever-growing list of global challenges. Young people do not want to inherit a world in chaos or one gone past the point for repair. We are dreamers, we are innovators, thinkers, doers and believers. We want to live and want our children to live in a br brighter and better world. Therefore, to all of you I say, please let us help you in building this world. Thank you, Chair.